Hello, traders, and welcome to this fantastic webinar that we are having today here at fxstreet.com. Uh, my name is Juan Maldonado. Um, I am the chief strategist, Elliot Wave, at FX Traders Edge. Uh, we are a company that our objective is to uh, train traders. We have a lot of tools that I will explain a little bit more at the end. Uh, Jody Samuels, our CEO, can't be with us today, but we are going to have fun uh, with the wave counts. We are going to cover a lot of markets, and it's going to be a great webinar. I'm sure about it. So uh, I would like just to introduce our team. Here is Jody Samuels. Uh, here is uh, Fernando Luna. Here is Neil Bradford. He, he runs the uh, London Trading Room. We have Beans, that is our trader in the New York trading room, and here I am. So let's start now with the wave counts. I'm going to the euro dollar on the daily chart. But always when you are studying, when you are analyzing a wave of a currency or any instrument, it's important to start from the weekly chart. The weekly chart is going to tell you a lot of information. So you can start studying the, the chart and then you can start moving down to a lower time frame. And even if you trade on the five minute chart and the one minute chart, you need to start from the weekly always to understand the context of the markets. So here we, I have the weekly chart. I'm going to hide some of the waves. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can understand what is the euro doing. So what's the plan? The plan for the euro dollar or our forecast is that the pair is inside of a triangle. The triangle always has five waves inside. It's something very simple. Just five movements inside that I would like to highlight here for you, the, the first to move up for the wave A, then a B wave down, then a C wave up, then a D wave down, and then the E wave. Always, when we are counting the waves, the most important question is when and where the wave is going to end because it doesn't matter if this is the weekly chart or is the five minute chart. Always you are going to find trades when you find the end of the waves. So that's very important to start mastering the technique about the end of the structures, about the end of the cycles. So from the weekly chart, that's going to be the question. Uh, when and where is the E wave going to end? Because, of course, once we have or once we found the end of the E wave, price is going to start moving down again, at least to test the triangle line. That that's going to be the 124 area in the long term. So now we need to focus on this price action, finding the end of the E wave. When we understand these kind of structures, and you, for example, you agree with this forecast and you have your, uh, your forecast, then your trades are going to be so much easier to understand and so much easier to identify because you're not going to take a long trade to the 160 if you are having these kind of counts. So Elliott Wave, the Elliott Wave theory is going to tell you the context of the markets, but it's not going to tell you when and where to, to trigger a trade because that's part of the strategy. So we are going to talk about also the strategy. Uh, there are a lot of strategies that you can find to uh, trigger the trades. Most of the strategies are just finding the end of a trend, the end of a cycle, a reversal, and all that stuff. So let's focus here on this uh, price action for the B wave. There is another characteristic about the Elliott wave theory, and is that we have waves 
inside waves. More waves inside waves. That means that the market is fractal. The market is fractal. So we are on the weekly chart. And this is like a puzzle. If we go to the daily chart, we are going to see the waves inside the waves. So Elliott Wave is fantastic, and you don't need to be an expert in the wave theory to understand it. Actually, it's pretty easy. Uh, the wave theory says that the market moves in three wave sequence and five wave sequence, and that's it. So don't get confused when you see this W, X, Y, or A, B, C, or triangles. All of these structures are only three waves. Of course, if you want to master the technique and you want to become a professional analyst, you have to learn all the rules and all the guidelines. But if you want to use the wave theory just for your trading and just to understand the market, you can use other people analysis and find some nice trades with that information. So remember, just five waves and three waves. So we are inside this three wave structure. Now I'm going to start showing more waves. Of course, I'm going to hide some of these waves. And our forecast for this wave E has been a wave A, a wave B, and a wave C, or the B wave a blue, and then a C wave up. So again, just three waves here, A, B, C, and that's it. Of course, we have been spending a lot of time studying each part of the movements from the weekly chart to the five-minute chart with uh, the rules and the guidelines of the theory. So that's the plan. The plan right now, something simple, is that we are going down. We are going down to the 127.45. As always, we need to confirm our ideas. So for that, let's go to the daily chart and let's focus on this price action. Just a move down. So the price already ended. The move up, and now we are moving down. Let's go to the daily chart, and here we can understand better the markets. Because when you start using the Elliott Wave Theory in your trading, you are going to find a lot, a lot of nice setups, and then the market is going to have more sense for you. Sometimes it's very difficult because it's not easy. Like trading is not easy, and you can trade with price action, you can uh, trade with candlestick patterns, uh, you can trade with moving average, you, you can trade with just trend lines. There are thousands of techniques uh, to understand and to take trades. But with the wave theory, it's going to give you that context of the market. So you can understand each move. And that explanation that the wave theory is going to give you, of course, is going to um, increase the chances of success of your trades. So I think that is fantastic, the wave theory. Okay, so let's focus here. So we have been trying to find the end of the B wave magenta. I, I would like to hide some of the waves again here. So that was our mission during the last year, almost all the, the previous year, the 2013, we were working with the B wave magenta. Of course, that we can trade inside the waves. But here at the top, and I remember here that was close to the um, holidays. This was December 27, where the price finally ended that B wave at the 138.93. Was a huge move up very fast the day that went to that level, 138.93 and then start uh, dropping after that. So we were finding that end of the B wave of magenta. We start uh, just tracing some simple trend lines here. The, the red line is connecting the beginning of the structure, and the black trend line is something more conservative, connecting the, the waves 2 and the wave 4. And all these... Uh, Two months of the of the year, I mean January and February, that we are 
in February right now. Price has been sideways in the euro. And this is a fantastic exercise for all kind of traders. Because most of the traders, the technique is to find a new lows and trade with that. So what's the plan? Like just the Dow theory, a move down, then a retracement. Then we have a, a horizontal line here. And when we have the breakout, we start saying, okay, we are in a trend. We are making new lows. And the counter trend trades, uh, and the, yeah, the counter trend trades are going to try to find these lows to buy to the, to the retracement. And the trend traders are going to find the top of the retracement to go down. So that's very simple. But what happens when the instrument that you are trading starts making something like this? So I'm going to hide these waves. Because always in any chart you can find and you can study and you can learn a lot if you pay attention to the price action. So here we have the euro making the, the first low that we are calling it wave one. Then we have a retracement right here. So I'm going to trace this horizontal line in green. Then we have the breakout of the previous low. So if you're a breakout trader, I'm sure that a lot of people try to sell the euro here, thinking that this was a continuation. So that was a bad decision, of course, because after that breakout, the price make this a strong candle in just one day, uh, taking like all the stops from the people who, who sell here, it made a new high above the previous retracement. So that's very difficult to trade when this happens. And after that, after, after making that high, it comes down again, breaking out the previous low. And after just making that breakout, it turns around and it starts moving up again. So two times that some traders were trying to sell the pair. It didn't work just with a breakout. And of course, it's very difficult because nobody can predict an expanding figure or an expanding um, pattern. That's very, that's very difficult. Like you can, you can see this almost after the fact. But if you are an uh, Elliott wave uh, trader, uh, you can react fast when this kind of things happens and depending on your style because you can be a swing trader or you can be a day trader and you're going to take advantage of that of course uh, with the confirmations on lower time frames okay so we know that january was a tough month for the euro because this is structure but now that we have it like after the fact uh, we understand what happened and it's an expanded triangle. So I'm going to show all the waves here. And we can focus on that triangle. Okay. Also, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. And the triangle always has uh, five waves inside. With the wave theory, we label the five waves as an A, B, C, D, and E. Something very simple. Also, there are, there are some feeble relationships, feeble natural relationships between the wave two and the wave one. So let's make that exercise. There we go. So the, the C wave ended at the 50% of retracement for the wave two. Then price goes back down again to complete the B wave. And after that, it starts moving up again to the 38.2% of the wave two. Right there, we have that huge reaction to the 136.81. That's a fantastic reversal candle. So I'm thinking that the E wave is complete. And if today the price closes like this, this will be an evening star. So that's going to be a fantastic confirmation. 
So as you can see, if you start mixing the different techniques, candlesticks here, with Fibonacci, with the wave theory, wow, you are going to understand what's going on. Because if you have a blank chart, uh, it's going to be very difficult to find the explanation of the movements and to create possible future scenarios. If you have this forecast, it will it is not going to be a good idea to buy, right? If you have this forecast, you are not going to buy. So the, with the forecast, you say, okay, I want to sell. Now the question is when and where, and that depends on the uh, personality that you have about the, the trades, because you can be a swing trader, day trader, and of course it's different for each kind of trade. For example, a long term or medium term trader is going to start triggering his trades tonight because we have the breakout of the black line that I would like to highlight this a little bit more. So I'm going to increase the size of my black line and let's make it in a different color. What about blue? Okay, there we go. So we have that breakout first, the first breakout of the price right here. Now we know that that was an expanding uh, pattern and we have the breakout. After the breakout, the price makes the pullback of the breakout. So it starts moving high again. Now we have this fantastic evening star that is breaking out the trend line again. So the second breakout is like the confirmation of a valid breakout because we know that always when we have a breakout of a trend line, it's going to make a pullback. And also that pullback went to the red trend line that I explained in a, in the weekly chart. So that also was the 38.2% of retracement. So I think that this is fantastic what's happening here with the euro. Uh, it's starting the new trend. Oh, okay. So let's go now to the four hour chart and let's see what we see there. Because always when you are taking the kind of trades, you have to take the time to analyze, to understand what's going on. Great. So here we are on the four hour chart. And this is a complete exercise from the weekly chart moving lower and everything. This is like a puzzle. Remember, Elliott wave is like a puzzle and everything needs to match. It's something perfect that needs to match. So from the four hour chart, we have another structure. Maybe we can see it better on the hourly chart, just a five wave sequence where we have the wave one. Then we have the wave two that retrace it, retraces to the 50 percent. So see, the Elliott wave theory always works in all the time frames. And then we have the wave number three. The wave number three was very close to the 25.58. That is the 161.8 of the wave one. So now we know that we are here at the end of the wave three and price is building the wave four. A counter trend trader will be taking trades here to find the end of the, uh, the wave four. The wave four usually retraces uh, to the 23.6%. That will be the 135.83. And also is our trend line. So it's going to be like a mini pullback to the trend line for the wave four. And then after that will be the continuation. The trend trader is going to find the end of the wave four to ride the wave five. So the wave five, it's going to be Let's see some targets for our way pi. Now that we are talking now like a day trading here. Uh, the first target for the way five is the 135.50. The second target will be 135.28. Also, uh, the, the conservative target is going to be the 135.62, the previous low. Why that's the conservative target? Because when you have a strong move down, like this one here, that is huge from the hourly chart, that means that the oscillator, all the oscillators are going to show that move as the strongest peak in the oscillator. 
So when the waveform comes here, the oscillator is going to come back to the zero line because it's going to be sideways. And after the waveform, it's going to make the new low. So that's going to show divergence in the oscillator. So that means that below the previous low, all the price action down here, all the price action below the previous low, it's going to have divergence. Divergence doesn't mean reversal. Divergence means that the market is tired. But anyway, it's more risky to trade inside this kind of structures in the wave five when the price starts moving below the wave three. So all this red zone, you can trade it, but maybe you can close part of your position once a uh, price gets to the wave five or the wave, or the wave three, the previous wave three. And you move your stop loss to break even. And then you see how the price starts reacting here and reacting here. So that depends on your trading plan. Uh, some traders are going to close the trade right here when it gets to the previous low, just in case. And some others are going to try to wipe the last bit. So that's why we have different personalities and we have different styles. And of course, with the wave theory, uh, you are going to have uh, the, the trading plan and we're going to adjust the waves just to the way you like to trade. Okay. So that's the plan for today. I think that is fantastic for the new dollar. Now let's continue to the next instrument that is going to be the pound. Oh, okay. Just a quick look from the weekly chart. I did like, I take more time on the on the euro dollar, just to explain the context of the market and how the way theory works. But, but here we can do it faster. Okay, so I'm going to hide some of the waves here. And let's focus just in this last move of the price action. So our forecast is just a three wave sequence moving up. We are calling this WXY. So don't worry, this is something very simple. Just a three wave structure like this. That's it. Something simple. That's from the weekly chart. Now let's go to the daily chart. Okay. From the daily chart, um, just like a comment about the pound, the pound always makes something very complex. Like all the, the moves of the pound always are, are very complex. The euro is a little bit more clean. The euro gen is fantastic. So each pair has their uh, its own personality about the wave theory. Okay, so uh, what's going on here? Always the market ha it, like moves in an impulse. Then we have consolidation, and then we have uh, another impulse. When you are trading live. One of the most difficult parts of trading is that when you see a move up and then you see consolidation, the question in that moment is, oh, that's going to be a continuation or it's that that's going to be a reversal. Because after the fact, it's very easy to know it. But when you are live, when you are taking decisions live, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to understand what's going on, if the consolidation is going to be a reversal or if it's going to be a continuation. So that's the question. Uh, and with the wave theory, of course, that helps a lot. And also with a good strategy, you're going to find that answer. And of course, with your uh, trading plan, you're going to take the decision. You're going to try to set your stop loss uh, at the conservative level. And, ju and then just leave the price alone to hit the stop loss or to hit the target, right? So uh, that's why it's so important to have something like Elliott Way to create a plan. Because when you don't have something like Elliott Wave, it's very difficult because it's too confusing. Of course, Elliott Wave, if you want to be a professional analyst, that takes time and that takes effort and you need to study and you need to practice. But I think that is fantastic. Okay. So uh, from here, we have again another move up. So we have a move up. 
then we have another move up, and we are inside the same consolidation. So we have that question again. Is this going to be a reversal? This is going to be a continuation? Hmm, that's difficult, right? Because we are live, and oh, it's so confusing, and we have some thing expanding here, breaking out the previous lows, breaking out the previous highs from the daily chart. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Okay, so what's the forecast? Um, the forecast has been working fantastic, especially on lower time frames, because from the medium and long term, we don't have a confirmation yet. The confirmation uh, from the daily chart will be the breakout of this bullish flag. The bullish flag is just a classic pattern that works when you have a move up, then you have a consolidation, and then you have another move up. And this is the flag. The same is true in a bearish move. When you have a move down, then you have a consolidation. Here is the, the flag, and then you have another move up. If you have the breakout of the of the flag on the lower side here. If you have that breakout, you are not going to, to trade long anymore because that can be a reversal. And that's the first signal of a reversal. So that's the main difference. Of course, with the wave theory, we can start studying the structures inside to understand this better. Okay. So let's focus right now here uh, on the four-hour chart. Let's see what we have here. We know that we are inside this price action sideways. Who can trade this? Like, if, if you don't have a clear trading plan and you are just looking for 500 pips, for example, it's going to be impossible to, to trade in this kind of markets. So that's why it's so important that from the daily chart, you identify that we are in a corrective cycle. When we are correcting, even if you, in the hourly chart, you are seeing a clear trend or whatever, uh, you need to trade just for, for a few, a uh, few peeps or you need to be more, more conservative, right? So here we are inside the consolidation. Uh, price started to move uh, higher. So we have a uh, price action making this move up. We have a uh, accounting service. Uh, we have some trading rooms for, for our students. And precisely last night I was making this video, the update for, for London session. And we were uh, right here around the, the end of the way four. So we were talking about that continuation. So let's see the hourly chart. And I would like to focus here on the hourly chart. I'm going to hide my FIBOS to make this very clear. And I'm going to hide also some of the waves. Okay. Right. This kind of, this, of structures is the most simple with the wave theory, because we have one, two, three, four, and five. When you are live, and let's guess, let's suppose that we are here, right here, and you start seeing, okay, that's my wave three, I'm going to make the exercise, I'm going to see the relation uh, between the wave three and the wave one, in this case, was the 261.8, 164.8, 83. So you can see that this is amazing. This is fantastic because the, the waves uh, work with Fibonacci. And when, when you are learning how to use Fibonacci, it's very difficult because you are going to find in some places, okay, uh, start tracing your Fibo from, uh, from the top and run the Fibo tool all the way down. And in other places or in other uh, techniques, you are going to see, no, you don't need to do that. You, you need to run the FIBO from here uh, to here, for example. And in other places, no, that's wrong. You need to run the FIBO from here to here and make an expansion. And that kind of stuff without any sense. So with the wave theory, 
uh, you can precisely know where to where run the FIBO tool. And as you can see, this is fantastic because it's so precise. So we have the price action hitting our target for the wave number three, 164.83. And after that, you are live and you are thinking, okay, what I should do here? Uh, that can be a reversal or that can be a continuation. Should I buy or should, should, should I sell? And you start measuring the wave four. There we go. So price exactly goes to the 23.6% of the retracement. Also, the trend line is a great tool. I really like to use trend lines. So let's see uh, here if we can start from, from here. Okay. There, there we have our trend. So price moves back to the trend line 23.6% that we know that that's a nice target for the way forward. And we start taking some decisions in that area, and then price starts moving up. So the conservative target for that move was the 164.87. And then for the wave 5, green, is this one here? Yeah. For the wave 5, green, always the first target is going to be the 100%. So 16506. So let's suppose that you just close the trade here at the 165.06, uh, and that was enough, because there is also something important. Well, sometimes you're going to have this kind of price action moving to the 161.8 to the 200%. And for your analysis, it's fantastic. But when you are trading, it's different. You have to be very conservative with, with your trading. Never, never, when you're trading something like this, you are going to be able to close your trade at the top, at the last peep of the move. That's going to be impossible. But you can have some conservative targets, and you close your trades, and that's it. And then you wait for the next train or the next trade. So always try to be very conservative with your money. That's, that's a great, great strategy uh, with the money management. I really like to be conservative. Sometimes price moves higher, than, than the level that I'm thinking, than, than my target. And that's fine, because sometimes it's just getting there and then starts the reversal. So that, of course, is going to reduce the risk a lot when you go conservative. Okay, so price right now is making that last move. Um, I would like to see the close today on the daily chart, like the oscillator, because we know that the oscillator is a lag indicator it, it, it brings us a lot of information, but it's in the past, right? So the oscillator uh, at the daily close, I, I would like to see that update to see how strong was this move. But for now, I'm counting five waves inside. So if you are a five-minute trader, you can use also the wave on the, the Elliott wave uh, strategy or the added wave analysis. One, two, three, four, and five. Five waves moving up. So I think that our wave one is complete now. And that means that price is going to start soon making the wave two. The wave two, the wave two, uh, usually retraces uh, uh, between the 50% and the 61.8%. So we can set our target at the 50%, 164.16. That doesn't mean that we need to sell right now because price can continue moving higher. The slope of the last move up is huge. So, of course, if we wait, and, and here is the, the nice part of this, if we wait until... The, the breakout of the trend line, wow, that's going to be too late to, to trigger that trade. So now you have to test your skills to find the top of the wave one and the wave five in a moment that the, the, the risk is going to be, is going to be like the risk reward. It's going to be one to three, one to four. But you have good chances of the reversal 
For that, you can use candlestick patterns, maybe some harmonics, uh, moving average uh, techniques on the 15-minute chart. So that will be the plan to find this reversal and then start dropping the price here to the at least 164.55 and then the 164.16. So that's going to be the strategy for the pump. I, I would like to check the 15-minute chart. And let's see what, what we have there. Let's see the, the candles inside. Okay, so here on the 15-minute chart, we have the five-wave sequence that was very fast. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move this a little bit just to see some of these candles here. Always we need to read all the information of the markets. And we know that a valid reversal will start once we have the breakout of the 165.53. Because that breakout is going to start making one to three patterns on lower time frames. So that's going to be like the first signal, the first validation that the wave 5 is complete. Let's add another tool here, from here to here. Wow, that slope is huge. Okay. So right now we are seeing that breakout, and the plan will be to, to find that reversal like as soon as possible, um, triggering the trade and riding all the way down to the wave number two. That's the plan for the pound. And finally, I would like to explain the Eurogen that we have a fantastic forecast in our uh, service and during our uh, training uh, classes with the Eurogen. I think that this is fantastic what happened here. So what's the plan from uh, the daily chart? We have one, two, three, four, and then five. Again, a five wave sequence. We are at the wave four. Let's measure the wave four area of reversal. In this case, it went to the 61.8%, 136.74. Right there, price starts moving higher and making the reversal. Okay, so let's go to the four-hour chart, and let's see what's going on here. Because I think that with the wave theory, like, of course, we are not going to have always the forecast 100%. That's impossible. But we can understand the moves of the market, and we can predict what's coming, and we can have invalidation price levels, and we can, of course, increase a lot the success of our trades. Okay, so we were finding here the end of the wave four. So I'm going to hide some of the waves. So we have here the wave one, two, three, four, and then five. Then the, the reversal is started here. And we start counting the waves inside. And this was fantastic because that was a one, two, one, two structure. I'm going to use this trend line here. There we go. Yeah. So we have Something similar, like the exercise we did with the pound on the 15-minute chart, but this is the Eurogen 4-hour chart. But something like this is what we would like to see on the pound. Uh, huge slope. Then we have the breakout of the trend line. We have the pullback. Then we have the, the breakout here at the previous high, one to three patterns. And from the Elliott Wave perspective, I'm going to show here all the waves. This is a one, two, one, two structure. Like this is fun because it's perfect. We have this kind of moves. So one, two, one, two, three, four, and five, three. We use again our number two. Of course, the wave two is one of the most difficult waves uh, to trade because always the wave two before before the wave two was a uh, move in the opposite way, right? And that's important. I would like to highlight that because that's very important. Up the previous move is very. So that means 
the continuation where? The continuation down. So this is the trap. So everybody starts uh, selling here, selling here, selling here, selling here in different levels, depending on the strategy. And most of them are going to leave the stop loss right here, 137.54. Is over and it's going to start moving up in that moment. And we have the breakout of that level. A lot of people lose money here. All the people that get that was in the trap here lose money. And with the wave theory, that's not going to happen to you because you are going to understand that the previous move was corrected and that we are inside of a, a new cycle. So, of course, the wave uh, theory is going to protect you against bad trades. Okay, so we have one, two, one, two, three, four, five for the wave three. Market is fractal, waves inside waves. Then we have wave four, then we have wave five to complete wave one. And now we are inside wave two. Our first target for wave two was the 138.75. The price already met. I'm thinking this is going to move deeper to the 138.75. 27. So that's going to be the forecast for this week for the Eurogen to end the wave number two. So here we will have a move. This is just a retracement and then a move down. Something like this, the 138.27. That's going to be the plan. Okay, so that's those are the markets that we covered today. And if you have any comments, if you have any question, please contact us. Uh, you can contact us at support at fxtradersedge.com or jody at fxtradersedge.com. We have Elliott Wave courses. We have Wave Eternal courses. That is our exclusive strategy to find the end of the wave, to find uh, the exact entry to the market. And we have also the ultimate course that comes with Elliott Wave, Wave Eternal, and Harmonics. We offer also trading rooms, counting service, and a lot of stuff for you. If you join our free trade zone, our free trader zone, uh, you're going to have some uh, exclusive content for free, like daily counts and blog and other, uh, other fantastic tools like uh, the Forex basic course. And you can just Go to fxtradersedge.com, register, and you will find all the stuff we have here for free. So that was the webinar today. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to be here for these 45 minutes with you. Uh, stay connected with fxstreet.com, with the other webinars, with the other analysis. And I'll see you on, a next, on the next webinar. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.